This is Warren Potts, and I'm going to go over our fourth quarter standards. Um, this is coming from our fourth quarter priority standards for e-learning document. That was emailed to all your instructional facilitators, and you should have gone o should have gone over this in your PLTs. Um, as you'll notice, there's not much of a change from our what we had before we went um, home for e-learning, and um, that's because that our standards build on themselves. And if we did not teach our standards somewhere, as it was laid out, uh, we would create some gaps that would come up later. So it's important for us to make sure that we're we're covering all the areas, uh, so we don't create those gaps. Moving on to third third grade, um, our focus is structures and functions of living organisms, three L one and three L one two, and so. Uh, for this standard, we're understanding the human body systems and how they are essential for life, protection, movement, and support. Focusing on protection and support. What are the what are the main systems that are important for that? And so 3L11 says compare the different functions of the skeletal and muscular system. 3L12 explain why skin is necessary for protection and for the body to remain healthy. Uh, really, all three of those systems um, are are involved with protection, and um, and so it's it's going to be fun to go into how they are. How can they help with with protection, and which one of those help with movement, and which one of those help with structure or support? So um, what it is not is going into um, all the human body systems. It is not going into what a cell is, all the parts of the cell, mitochondria, the googly, googly um, apparatus. No, it's it's not the parts of the cell. Um, it's not parts of. It's not all of the the uh, human body systems. It's focusing on these three uh, systems, and and we're going to build on that as they go into fifth grade, and then study the human body systems further, and then in middle school as well. Moving on to fourth grade. Our standard um, is, and, and this is such an important grade uh, for 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 our, for our our science. Moving on into uh, middle school, uh, building on from this, moving into middle school. So we're doing uh, forces in motion, four P one, explaining the various forces affect the motion of an object, and this is in mostly in relationship to magnets. We've had some experience with magnets in kindergarten and first grade. And, and now they're getting in more in depth with magnets and understanding that um, um, most, most things made of iron are attracted to magnets and that things that are magnetic can be moved without touching. So, um, so we're going in more in depth with that. We're learning that also electrically charged things, 4P12, can become magnets. So as you move the electrons through a metal object, um, becoming making it electrically charged, it becomes a magnet. So yeah, so some really cool things that you could see there. Um, uh, it definitely comes to mind the huge magnet that, that you see at the junkyard. There's a video and resources, and um, that's going to be a neat thing for for kids to see um, how they pick up those cars with that huge magnet. And now our unit plan organizer for 4P3 our standard, uh, recognize that energy takes various forms that may be grouped based on their interaction with matter. And so um, this is our energy standard for fourth grade. We'll go into more in depth um, in, um, in actually in middle school. Uh, so there's not a direct connect um, so much with this standard to fifth grade, but it, it's definitely something that they need that background knowledge with this as they think about some some things like the sun and then also um also energy when they're talking about motion in fifth grade so uh, 4p3 recognizing the basic forms of energy light sound heat energy electrical and magnetic um, one of the things that can be noted as energy is chemical energy but you notice that's not on this list so we're not looking at chemical changes, chemical energy. Um, we're focusing on light, sound, heat, energy, electrical, and magnetic as ability to cause motion or create change. And then also recognizing that light travels in a straight line 
until it strikes an object or travels from one medium to another, and that light can be reflected, refracted, and absorbed. So we're focusing on light for uh, 4P32. I'm really looking at that light energy and, and connecting that to a lot of the things that they've learned before this, for this grade. Now for fifth grade, for our fourth quarter standard, um, 5P2, understand the interactions of matter and the changes that occur. So um, one of the biggest uh, things that we talk to teachers about with this is that this isn't looking at chemical changes. Um, let's look over what this actually is showing us to do. It's to explain how the energy, how the sun's energy impacts the processes of the water cycle, including evaporation, transpiration, con condensation, precipitation, and runoff. So we're focusing on the energy from the sun, energy, how it impacts the process. And so um, we want to really focus on, you know, what, what are changes to uh, physical changes to water as it's moving through the water cycle? So that, that's the focus for 5P21, that clarifying, um, clarifying objective. 5P22, compare the weights of an object to the sum of the weight of its parts before and, and, and after an interaction. I really like to pair this clarifying objective up with the next one, 5P23, summarize properties of original materials and the new materials form to demonstrate that a change has occurred. So I like to call this the science fair um, clarifying objectives or the science fair standards because uh, when you are conducting a science fair project, you should be looking at, with your experiment that you conduct, looking at the qualitative and quantitative um, features of, of what you're doing before and then after and comparing those. And so what this standard is not about is it's is not about the chemical changes. It's, it's really taking observations, both qualitative and quantitative of, of what's happening before and after. And then also those observations of happen that, that of happen during the interaction too. So, um, so here are some of our teacher notes and our unit plan organizer. Students will learn that for 5P22, will learn that the weight of an object is equal to the weight of the sum of its parts. This is true in all closed systems. And then 5P23, it is not necessary to teach chemical changes. In order to teach chemical changes, students need to under, understand the chemical properties of elements. Students will be introduced to the periodic table and chemical properties in eighth grade. So it's not even being covered in sixth grade. It's gonna be covered in eighth grade when we talk about chemical changes. So it doesn't need to be brought up now. All right, and now we're gonna move into some of our resources. Pause now. Greetings, this is Steve Overholt, the other science coach. I am Warren's side coach or side uh, kick in science. That was the right word, the wrong way said. Greetings, this is Steve Overholt, the other instructional coach for the science department. I am Warren's side kick in science. I am the Chewbacca to his Han Solo. I am the goose to his Maverick. Um, so today we're going to be talking through what is our what is it that our resources for at home learning. Uh, I'm going to start off by uh, talking a little bit about the at home site uh, inside of our science resources page. We have a page called supporting stu students away from school. We have a, underneath that is a page called elementary school at home. Inside of this page, we have resources that are content related. We have things that are going on within science, um, things like the virtual science fair that are Earth Day fair, those things are happening with other field trips. You'll see some of that kind of information that's out there. Um, we also have things like SciShow Space and Kids and SciShow itself. Um, some of the resources that we have for materials and, and websites and things that we have that are because of COVID-19. Um, so a lot of that is on here, but also, as you notice on the left-hand side, we've got materials for kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth. These are the units that we have been talking about while we have been on distance learning for the last few weeks. 
So that information is here as well. Um, so going through this part, we'll talk a little bit about that individually as we get going. Um, first, we're going to go into third grade. Uh, Warren talked a little bit about pacing and what our UPOs, our unit plan organizers say. So right now we're going to look at what it is that are standards. So we, we go to the UPOs regularly, but we also come back to the unpack document. So underneath of the pacing blueprint on the Power School Learning page is the unpack document from the state. So it gives us information for our standard and it gives us our clarifying objective, just like the unit plan organizer does. However, it gives us also the unpacked information that gives us some more information and helps us understand what it means for a child to know, understand, and be able to do. So as we're looking through here, we're going to start to make some connections as to what it is for our kids that they need to do. Um, sometimes when we read through this, we get other ideas as to what we want our students to be able to do beyond just what it is that is that one statement compare the, the different functions of the skeletal muscle system. Um, for example, this one right here says that muscles are also found in internal organs and are responsible and essential for life processes, the heart, the stomach, and the intestines. So we get a little bit into that part of it. It is the muscles that are a part of the heart, the muscles of the stomach, the muscles of the intestines which are pushing the food and through our body to help push it through and to get it out. So coming into this and looking at what is this say about our content and helps us understand that a little bit better. As we jump back out of here, um, we're going to go ahead and get into our third grade life science page. Um, so I'm going to click third grade. We're going to click on life science. Mess that up. Sorry. We're going to click on elementary. We're going to scoot down to third grade. Life science, and we're going to get into structures and functions, but we're going to go to the resources page. Inside the resources page for us, we're going to be able to look and see that we have um, our first, our warm ups, and our previews. They are over here, and this document helps us to be able to get kids to respond back to us. Uh, and there's some people that have been using these and putting them into Google Forms and being able to get kids to respond back and figure out what it is they are getting out of there, what information do they know. We also have this lesson that was here is um, builds a model of the bones and the muscles and how they work together. Um, Warren already made a video on this one where he created this model at home, utilizing materials from his home. It's just to show how the muscles are attached to the bones. Um, so that's up and available for you to have on our, our at home site, you'll see. Um, we have videos on different parts of the skeleton and the muscles and we have the kids health great site for a lot of things that comes down to your human body um, it's enjoyable to hear some of the interesting characters that they have on there but utilizing some of that to help us to make sure that we are understanding uh, the parts of science that we have but these research these video resources are great um, so we'll show you a little more as to what we have in the at home site and so at home, we're going to scroll here, and we've got some things on the skeletal system inquiries and muscle uh, muscular system inquiries. This one right here, but with the digestion, this is a um, this is a lesson that has to do. You're thinking we don't have to do the digestive system, no, but it talks about the muscles and how the muscles are causing the motion and getting things to happen with those systems. So it gets to that last statement of our unpacked document that we have that was in there. Um, the uh, bones and muscle inquiry lesson, this one right here, I believe is Warren's. And so it is a 5e lesson plan that's up there for you um, to go ahead and click on these and utilize these, figure out what it is that you have. If you think of something, hey, I really wish we had a video for this and have an idea and shoot us an email. We'll try to help out to navigate how to do it. If we have the resources to be able to make it happen, in collaboration with you, we'd love to do that, but just uh, keep on the lookout. Um, fourth grade. If you look at the fourth grade page. We'll look at that very similarly. You guys are into the forces in motion and the energy conservation. So as we pull out our unpacked document and we get into the first part here, causing forces in motion, magnets causing us to have motion, those are the standards that Warren was talking about. 
um, coming back in and talking about the pushes and the pulls and the uh, that part that's happened with repelling with electrical charge. Are we talking about um, static? Did you talk about static and how that uh, attracts certain things and being able to have that one? Um, I'm waiting for somebody to do a video with the comb and the water, being able to bend the, the stream of water coming out of a faucet. I think that would be great to see somebody do that. If you have that one, please share that with us. That'd be incredible. But go ahead and utilizing some of this. And then your next one you have is also energy conservation. You're talking about you're talking about making circuits. Um, and Warren and I were talking, and I've got materials here to be able to make uh, a circuit. I've got some bulbs, and I've got some battery holders, I've got some wires. And I'm looking forward to making uh, a little bit of videos as to how that works and then having kids respond back probably with a Google form. It's a way that's very easy for students to be able to manage and for teachers to manage and to be able to get the information so they can give the feedback that they need to make sure that we have kids that are learning the content that we need them to learn. Uh, so from here, we're going to go into the, um, uh, the resources page. So we're going to click on physical science and then forces in motion resources. Don't forget that these pages are here too. The videos that are in here are generally pretty solid. Um, here's one that talks about magnets. And this one was made for teachers to be able to reenact. So if you have a magnet at home, whether it's, you don't have to have these exact magnets, but go ahead and do things. What things are attracted to magnets? So run some of those. Magnet online resources. Those are in here. How to make a electric electric magnet. Um, keep, yes, don't be careful with this one. Don't have kids make this one. It will heat up because the resistance in the wire can get warm. So um, you do this as a model, but use safe. Think safety as you're doing things. Um, Warren talked about the big magnets at the, at the junkyards. Talk about these things. Fear what you have. Magnet lab, interactive lab. I hope this one's still going. A couple of these from this site stopped working. Um, and then some passages from ReadWorks in there. Utilize these resources as you're making your lessons as well. Um, you've got light ref reflecting and refracting. I always stutter when I say those ones. I didn't get it pretty good this time. Um, getting into some of these things that you've got. This inquiry lesson right here. Uh, let's click on it real quick. I think it, no, this is the good. This is the Discovery Ed one. It's pretty solid. Um, utilize the resources that we have. You don't have to recreate everything that we have. Some of the things that our standards are not aligned with some of their resources that are out there. We have to make them. All right, so now in the fifth grade, we're going to look here at the fifth grade page. Beneath the pacing is where our unpack document is. And as we pop this out, we see that 5P2.1 gets into the water cycle, getting into why the, how the energy from the sun impacts the changing of the water cycle. It's cycling it through matter, so it is solid, liquid, and gas. How the heating does that changing, um, connecting it that way, um, connecting in, uh, looking things in a true closed system and how the weight is equal to the sum of its parts. So getting into that total piece, we're setting the foundation as they get into the chemistry of things from middle school, as they get into understanding conservation of mass, they will get there. We don't need to worry about that yet in fifth grade, but we're, we're setting that foundation. One big thing, I know Warren spoke about it in his, but I'm going to hit control F and it brings up the search bar in every document. I'm just going to do this. C-H-E-M-I-C-A-L. Why is it not typing in there? There we go. C-H. Not typing in there. Why is it not typing? There we go. Thank you. C-H-E-M-I-C-A-L. Chemical is not mentioned. It's not mentioned because it's not there. We don't understand chemistry in the fifth grade. We do not understand the things that have to do with it. Um, our standard says that we need to know the qualitative and quantitative records before and after materials have gone through in interaction. So if we're talking about vinegar and baking soda, I just need to look at what does it look like before qualitatively and what it looked like after qualitatively, what it looked like with my quantities, my, my masses and my volumes before and how was it after the interaction? I don't understand the chemistry of it. Kids are not asked to figure out what happens when I put two reactants of acetic acid and sodium bicarbonate together and have a reaction, and what, what kind of product do I get from that? We get some carbon dioxide. That's not necessary. Kids don't need to understand. It. They don't understand the periodic table. They don't know it yet. So we're going to stick with what we've got. So 
now that we have that understanding and my get me off my soapbox, we're going to come back in here and look at what it is that our the resources that we have. Um, we're in the physical science page. We're going to hit matter properties and change and hit on the resources here. And as this opens up, we're going to look at a trip through the water cycle. We've, we've seen this one. We've done this one. It's a really nice uh, way to look at it. And you can see the different ways that water comes, making it rains on here. There's some vi good videos that are on here. It's changing solid, liquid, and gas as it goes through that the, the phases of the water cycle and how the heat impacts that is a good one. Um, we've got some uh, probes that are in here. Is going to, we're gonna, I have an example of an activity that goes along with the lemonade probe. Um, we have some ideas for you. And these are videos that were made for teachers to reenact. But if these are things that you want to do and write up questions or write up some response that comes with them, feel free. Um, the video quality is not quite as good. They've got better cameras these days. But, uh, yeah, use them up. Use how, however you want to do it. Warren's That Some Robot. I think that's a great activity. I like that one a lot. Um, there's a ro video for it. There's also is a, a sheet for it. If you can find a way to make that sheet interactive, one of our lesson ideas, it's in here. Um, scroll through this one. There's lots of good information here. Also, going back and looking at this uh, at-home learning page. We've got some things that are in there. Um, we've got, well, that's the heat stuff. Oh, right here, we've got some of the water cycle. Uh, this one says chemical changes, but a, the big heart of what's in that one is all looking at the quantities and qualities that we have things as they're going through those interactions. This is a Discovery Ed one, so it isn't quite getting to, to the depth of what you're thinking of when you see the word chemical changes, but it is a good, it's a pretty, pretty good lesson that's there. And um so use the resources that we have some of them are very well aligned that are coming from other places with better lessons and uh, also from discovery ed we've got some things that we want to do that are that are not in in there so we want to have to create some of those if you see some activities or have an idea for an activity that you want to do let us know what it is if you want help to create it we can try to help problem solve that one um and, and how to do them we're huge fans of we video and doing videos for kids to be able to see things and hear things from their teachers. You're the ones, you're the experts, ladies and gentlemen. You're the ones that um, that they know, they love, and they trust. That we want you to be the one teaching them. So get some ideas together as to how you want to teach them. And put them out there. Um, making the videos. Don't worry about how it looks. Just get you because they know you and they like you. So that's 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 what we're what we're trying to do here is give you opportunities to do some of the teaching yourself because you're it. You're the you're the bee's knees, as they say. So, thank you for watching this one, and we're going to go back and we're going to show you something with some tech tips next. This is Steve again. We're going to be talking about uh, technology a little bit. So, one of the things that I wanted to uh, lift up to you first is the digital teaching and learning page on power school learning if you are not part of this page you might want to be and if you are not part of this page take down this address to bit.ly forward slash wsdig slash winston salem digital 18 when they created the page you put that into your address bar and it comes up and will give you access to this page now once you get onto this page uh, you have a couple different things. One, get, this is a sample power school learning page in a way that you can set it up for your kids and help them to be able to do things in it and put assignments in, how to put things in. Um, it, he has down, they have down um, your schedule of what you're going to do day one, day two. Uh, YouTube videos can be embedded into there. So it just helps us to have that structure that we might want to have. Um, also has on the side some some tutorials and some things that you can do to help to move yourself along and make things a little bit smoother technology wise. Another thing that they have in here is um, they've got some videos to help and to inspire you. There's some good ones in here, um, but digital distance learning instruction for the record, it's not all Marty. Uh, they got some good ones in here. What it means to be synchronous and asynchronous. Um, 
how to create Flipgrid. Flip, Flipgrid is one of those one of those uh, technology pieces that I think is very beneficial for what we're doing right now with distance learning because it gives kids the opportunity to video respond to uh, what they're doing and creating. It gets them, it gets them uh, thinking and working and uh, I think that's a great one. Another one that I don't have any videos in here on is all is for Seesaw. And if we need to, if you want help with Seesaw, um, I've done a little bit with it. I'm not by far, I'm far, far from an expert with it, but I think I can find somebody that can help you out with it. If that's something you want to do. Um, I've got a teacher that I work with over at Smith Farm and she's doing it right now. I think she might be a person that might be able to help you out with it to create lessons for your kids that they can respond and back, respond back to you as this, as a teacher. Um, using we video for lots of different things here's a little bit of instruction on how to do a few things uh, 15 second vocabulary i just watched this one jonathan's it was very funny very cool and it just gets into giving kids the opportunity to respond and do 15 second vocabulary and it's a it's actually is a, a nationwide thing that they uh have some some requirements that it must be part of the 15 second vocabulary videos so very neat i like the way that one laid out but look through here find out some of the information that you have find out some of the different options that you may have as you are working through and looking at different things technology wise now um, as you are into the at home learning page in the science resources um, some of these are ones that we have searched for and found for lesson plans some of them are a little bit different um, and if you have one that comes up for a um, like this one right here, this is a sound. We have created it so that it makes you make a copy. This is for the teacher to make a copy. And I'll show you how to do that one in a second. So you click make a copy. If I can get mine to work. Oh, I'm still spinning up here. Hopefully my computer, or my, tech, my uh, internet doesn't crash on me. All right, so I hit make a copy. And so now this is, so if I was a teacher, say a teacher, I'm Miss Brooks at Easton and um, I get on here and I click on this. So now I've created my own copy. Now for you, you can go ahead and make and change the title of this to um, Brooks Sound Vibrations 2P 1.1. And what this is, is now this is your Google form. And Google Form has uh, the video link that goes to the kids are going to watch. Um, this will be a hyperlink once we submit this for kids to respond to. Okay. So, um, and then it says this form automatically collects email addresses for Winston-Salem Forsyth County School users. So you, once you they submit, you'll see, you'll see how that works. First question says to type in a short answer. So that was is to put in your name. So I always put the first one on there as your name because that way you know who has submitted things to you and just some questions that go in there. And these questions are answered in the video. And we get a chance to figure out and connect to how do we make the highest pitches? How do we make the lowest pitches? How are the vibrations larger, vibrations smaller? And then some response to things. We give me a couple of examples of you know, things in your house that make noises when, and you see vibrations. What are some of the things that you're seeing? Uh, so just this is editable. If you want to change anything of this, so this is yours now. We set it up so that we have it created, and now you make your copy, but you can make it yours after that. Um, so if you haven't done this before, um, notice that in up here it says um, edit is at the end. If you are a, a teacher and you've created the document and you want your kids to make their own copy or forces them to make a copy, all you have to do, do that, is to erase the word edit backspace a few times and type in the word copy and now it forces you to make a copy so whenever you want to have somebody make their own copy you don't want to mess up your original you can do this and now they can go ahead and do what they want to do with it so that's one little tip as to how to, sometimes you will notice that it'll have um a bunch of letters and things it'll say iv3 q u o e and then comes back to here and it says edit you come all the way back to this forward slash and you're going to edit and everything after it and put copy and it'll make it will force a copy now once we have created this one and now it is for that one you can um submit it to somebody you give it to your kids you can email it to them if that's how you want to do it you if they are if you've taught your kids to to 
check emails and do that 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 can be your thing if you want to post it and you want a link you can take the you the link here oh that's too long we click this button right here and it shortens it down okay um and you can hit copy and then you can go post that into uh power school learning you can post it into google classroom however you do that you can you, you can put that in there then once they have done that one once they have done it and we it'll show to the students will get this so now this is the student version of it they cannot edit this this is now for them to fill in but the this is a live link and once we hit the live link it takes them to youtube and it opens up the video of miss simpson not to walker town she does a great job volume up it's a, it's a little bit low on but if you see it she's making vibrations happen with the the ruler um but then we have the follow-up is with the google so after the kids are watching that one they can come in here and type in their name and don't capitalize too many things and then they come down to the next one um i'll select here and i'll select here select here um which is the lowest which is always high for the record i'm not reading this i'm just going to show you what it looks like once you get this if you've never used google forms before um two examples of your house i can this is this is set up for paragraphs so there's room for lots of things for your kids to write in here um the stereo speaker and the um, TV, it vibrates when I turn it up too loud. Um, so, and I type in something else here, and then I can hit submit. Once I hit submit, this is the student's submission. And now, if you can, if this is yours, and we now see that we have responses one, and so I can see who has responded. I can see what the answer choices were and who chose what. You say, I can't tell, I can't take down, get enough information for that one. If I click click here, it gives me to create a spreadsheet and it will lay it out in a spreadsheet as to who responded and who had what answers. It'll help you to really know how to give your feedback back to your students um, and it's all taken care of for you. So we showed you some resources for different things for technology. And from, from this page, remember we have WSDIG18 is our bit.ly address that's here for you to go into that one. Lots of videos and resources, help guides. We video help. I have been big into we video and I think I've, I've used it a lot and I've gotten a lot better at it. Uh, some great things that are able to happen uh, through that with the videos for kids to be able to see things and hear our words to teach them. Um, not a fan of just giving them articles to read and somebody else's videos to watch. I want for the, actually talking to standards with the kids. So I'm a big fan of that one. Um, as we're into this, let us know if you have questions or concerns. If you want some help, we can get you into contact with people who know better on the technology than we do. We know some things, but we're not experts by any means. Um, so let's come back and see if we have any questions that we need to have addressed. Thanks for watching.